And now we're going to dive into project profitability. It is a setting. Yeah, I'm going to be working with this firm tomorrow. We're going to set up like three projects for them. The old story is using a sub-customer, right? Let me, let me tell that because I think the story is, is good. We'll go into customers. This is what we did for years, right? You create a new customer, and then there's this sub-customer field, right? And you can make it a sub of a parent, just like you would a sub-account, and you can bill with parent. The main entity is going to pay all the invoices, right? So usually 99% of the time it was always bill with parent. And it was a great workaround because you're just like in pro, you're, you have these customer job fields, but in QBO, we taught, we, it's a customer project or it was just customer forever. You can just tag it and you can see your income expense. That's the whole goal. There's some settings too that I have to show you. But we're not doing sub-customer anymore. You still can, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not supported. It totally is and people still do it. And if, if it's working for a client and they don't need project tracking, then by all means. But the firm I'm meeting with tomorrow, and I'm going to help them set up, I think, three to four projects in the client file, uh, they were doing sub-customer for a long time. And then they were looking for this one report that shows everything, which isn't happening. So I suggested projects, and that, that's why I think projects is better, particularly particularly if you want to see the, the actual cost and process of time. Right, we'll go over that. So I don't do sub-customer anymore, but that was the old story, right? So what you do is you go to settings, account and settings from the gear icon, and it is an advanced setting, but there's some other settings too that are super important. No, not bill pay. No. So you scroll down, you see projects. So turn that on. It used to be a QB Labs thing and beta, so if, if, if you had it on and the client file your client did, it's on. Right. There's no option to turn it off. Time tracking. This works great for like engineering firms, right? And we should kind of get a, a couple birds here with a stone. Forgive the reference if you're a fan of birds. I don't dislike birds. Um, I just always use an analogy and I can never find a better one. So, you know, I grew up in the 70s. So time tracking, make sure you add service field to timesheets and you want to make it billable to customer, right? So we are going to talk about pass-through time material expense. There might be people here in the webinar today because we're going to spend about 15 minutes on this before we go to advanced. I want to make sure we're totally got project tracking, right, even at a high level overview. But some of you might be here just because you have clients that just pass through time material expense to an invoice, and you don't have to, like, create an estimate and invoice against it and have this, you know, involved project tracking. You know, it's good to know. We're going to look at it. But um, I am going to show pass through time material expense later. But since I'm in settings right now, let's, you're seeing these fields. Make sure you check these off. I would not check the box I do not have checked under time tracking to show billing rate to users entering time. I mean, I just would not show that. But um, particularly if they're, you're talking about sales reps here or something like that. But you want to add the service field to timesheets, and you want to make it billable or the option to make billable to pass through, right? That's what it's all about. So I have that, which is good. We have projects turned on. Very good. I want to go to the expenses setting next because this is why plus is mandatory for any kind of job costing, even if you use sub-customer. Essentials does not have any of this. Show items on expense and purchase forms. QBO Plus in advance supports what we call in desktop as double-sided or two-sided items. So one item can hit COGS and revenue at the same time. I can use it on a credit card expense or a bill or a check. Tag it to a customer. You see where I'm going here? Just like you can using the expenses or items tab on a check or bill or credit card expense, credit card charge, I should say, in desktop. It's the same theory. And it even looks the same, even though the coloring is totally different and the access points are different. The theme is the same, job costing. Right? But you need plus for these three settings. Next is to track expenses and items by customer or project and then make it billable if you want. And here's another default rate of markup, et cetera, and you can even track billable expense and items as income in a single account, and you just choose the account. Right. So there's that. These are This is an important setting. Now, while I have this up, I want to duplicate the tab and show you like what it means on a, on a credit card expense, and then we'll actually enter it real quick. I don't do tons of data entry on these webinars because you guys do data entry all the time, and I don't want to bore you. 
And uh, sometimes it's just really funny to watch me enter transactions. But I have to do some. So I'm going to do an expense to prove some of these fields, right? And we'll say we did, uh, do I have Home Depot here? I should. Yes. Hey, how about that? Now, you could do category, but I'm going to, you know, that's that's there too. Maybe we should do that. Let's call it like freight or something, even though I know, well, sometimes, you, you know, it's $250. And look, this customer project field, billable, okay? We're not doing class. Do not do class for job costing. Unless it's already working for you, don't fix it if it's not broken kind of thing. I'm a believer in that. But still. And you want to look at a, at a parent. Here's the parent name, Robert Allard Project. Okay? Let me go to duplicate another tab because I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But these settings, right, show items table, track expenses to customer, billable. This is what makes these fields happen, right? And I'm using categories, but I can also use items. Now, why items? Exactly. Because estimates and invoices are item-based. And that's how you're going to get the revenue, the invoice, right? So items are phases of the job. Most contractors will tell you that. And they set up all these service items or non-inventory parts, and they make them two-sided. And we'll open up another tab and talk about that, too, just to make sure we're all aligned in the setup that makes it this successful. So you would just choose, I think we have a framing in here, you know, we were going to do, and it's, I don't know, 600 bucks. See, you're tagging the project. Now, let me go over here, though. Now that we have projects turned on, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Projects in the left-hand panel. Forgive my tangent approach to presenting. I know it can get a little hectic or chaotic. I'll make sure you have the recording. And I have a 14-minute video on projects. Actually, I'm doing an updated one soon. But this is how my brain works, and I try to do the best I can. The older I get, of course, it gets worse. But still, hopefully you guys are hanging in there. And, uh, you know, just humor me for a sec, because I want to line a little further upstream. Now you know where those settings are. And those settings are even important if you're not doing project tracking at all. You just want to pass through time to expense to an invoice. Right? So you want to turn those on. You need plus for that. I know essentials can do time tracking and can pass it through. So there is that. If it's just like a smaller business and it's two users and it's just time to invoice, then essentials is fine. But then there's all this class location tracking you might want to do, right? And, and so um, plus for me is really where it, it starts, I think, for something that's totally viable for a service-based business that wants to track even just a little bit. I think you got to have plus and hopefully improving the case. So the project center is just that. It shows your projects, which is just a customer call-in job. It's the same uh, naming convention as you're used to in desktop for this. We just call it projects. Notice, even before I drill into this customer model, there's an hourly cost rate. This is how we now, and have been for, oh, year and a half, I would say, maybe even going on two years. Uh, we'll say a year and a half. In 2017, we were starting, or 18, starting to dabble in this. But what was the biggest gap in QBO versus desktop regarding payroll and job costing? Yeah, there's no customer job field on a paycheck, right? You can even do it by line item and desktop, okay? And that's still advantageous. Um, so a year and a half ago or two years ago, we started building this in. So how do we tag time? and the payroll specifically to job because there's still no customer project field on a paycheck with QuickBooks Online payroll or even the full service payroll, okay? And you might be using T-sheets or your client might and the time comes in tagged to the projects, it goes to the weekly timesheet and then it either goes to an invoice or payroll. So what we did is we give you this hourly cost rate feature. Now it's never gonna match payroll because payroll doesn't include overhead. And, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff that Dan Miller might have done that, you know, I'm going to pay him for that has nothing to do with this project, right? So it's never going to match that for obvious reasons. But the goal with this is to get a WIP report of the cost of the time to the business so that you can make decisions. Pro and Premier don't even have that visibility. Because time is non-posting in any QuickBooks. 
If you're using T-Sheets coming in, it's non-posting. Time does not become cost until you put it on a posting transaction, like a bill, a check, paycheck, credit card expense, whatever. But you have to be an enterprise on the desktop to even see a WIP report of cost to the business from the time entered against the job. QBO Plus in advance gives that to me. That is an advantage. Let me show you. So I put in, like, these are the wages per hour, you know, this and stuff, and I know it's a lot, but I don't know. This is what their total is, Elizabeth, Leah. So when they create the time, and I'll just show you here what it looks like. We'll do a single time activity for Leah. So Leah Hartman, and see, it's twenty-one fifteen per hour. That comes in from that hourly cost rate. You select the pay item, like regular pay. I mean, you can have up to like eight, eight pay items, I think, with QuickBooks Online Payroll. But I can also choose the actual project. So customer model, right, the service item. What did we do? We did some framing or something like that, right? How many hours was it? 10 hours so far. You can even create an estimate, right, to invoice against and put all these in the quantity field it will be your quote unquote hours because remember there's no unit of measure tracking yet in QBO. That's a hole I really want filled one day. Uh, advanced is a little easier with the custom fields. We'll get there. But um, let me just finish off this. You know, I can still, by entering the time, the hours, it's going to multiply by the cost rate and put it on a report for me that the client won't see, but I'll see to make decisions. I mean, your construction client will see, whoever is the business owner. Now, billable, I'm unchecking it. Why? Because in this scenario, there's already an estimate, and they agreed upon it, and I'm going to invoice against that estimate. So the revenue is separate to the time activity and the cost, but I still want to see the cost. I want to see the profitability against the project, right? Time is non-posting, but when I run payroll, it'll be posting. I know there's no customer job field or project field on a paycheck yet, but we do it behind the scenes. So this time, 10 hours, once I put on a paycheck, it would show on a profit and loss by project in wage expense or whatever account you did, you know, your online payroll. So that's how that happens, that hourly cost rate feature. I'm going to click save and close. The other thing is if it's a vendor, what about subcontractor vendors? Sometimes you're not doing payroll, but all the people are subcontractors for me. That's typical for construction, residential construction especially. So maybe commercial, there's more payroll involved. But at the vendor field, like let's say Michael, he's a vendor of mine, edit their record, you'll find a cost rate. You would put it in there. What's the cost? of Michael per hour. We're assuming unit of measure is hour for this kind of stuff. And that flows over too in the time field, okay? So it doesn't have to be an employee per se. And then you run payroll and then you would see the payroll expense. So when we go back to the project for the customer model, this is what allows me to have a profit margin. You know, I can see the revenue and I can also see down to payroll expense based on that time when I run payroll. I can see the wages for that project. Now, it also shows all of the transactions of the project. And you can enter them from here. We can start with an invoice, and then you can progress invoice against that to close it. So there's that. That visibility is helpful. I don't see it all in one report, but I see it all in one project center specific to this customer model project. An overview, my margin, all the transactions. I can even enter transactions from here against the project. Time activity, the time against it for, let's just say, June, and notice the total cost. Again, it's not going to match payroll, but it ballparks it so I can at least make some decisions. Because on the estimate or maybe the Excel spreadsheet or whatever you're using for, like, well, really probably, the, well, the estimate doesn't have a markup column, so it shows revenue, not cost. But you're using something to kind of maybe a budget, like people will create a budget against a project, too, in QBO Plus or Advance. And they put in the total cost for the project of the time. And so we have this report, time cost by employee, and it shows the duration, the time, based on date range against this project and what's the total cost. So if I've budgeted $800 or $1,200, let's say, in cost of time for this remodel project for Elizabeth and Leah to work on it, they're my contractors, or one's, one's an employee, doesn't matter, it's still going to show this based on my hourly cost rate or the vendor record cost rate. I'm right now at almost 650 bucks. So I know, even though it's not exact to payroll, and I might not even cut a check for these guys yet, I'm at least able to see 
the cost of the time ballpark an approximation so I can make a decision all right I'm halfway there I'm just over halfway there that is not visibility you see it all in Pro Premier you have to have enterprise for that right so this is QBO so I wanted to make sure you knew about that it's very important and then of course the other main uh, reporting I would say would be the P&O which we call project profitability but it's really just a canned profit and loss against the project they already filtered it we already did okay and I can see my profitability based on data entry net income of almost fifty dollars okay I know it's a ridiculous example uh, you guys will have more really cool real life examples but you'll be better than me because you actually have clients right I already know that going in I'm not pretending anything about my skill set I just want to make sure we're aligned with this canned reporting and the project center itself okay so maybe you see this hope you're like yeah I'm not using sub customer anymore because sub customer I cannot assign the payroll expense or wage expense to the sub customer except for a zero dollar check or zero dollar journal entry so project tracking is new and the the main advantage for me other than these centers so I can see like click into each one and that cool whip report that's probably my favorite but this hourly cost rate well they're related you know so that's projects now I wanted to do another two things here I'm going back to this expense right I have this I tag the Aaron project and I'm gonna mark it billable even though we know we're not but I'm gonna just do for this reason but that's how easy it is that's what those settings do right they allow me to tag the project I know I did a little project overview tangent but I'm coming back to this expense form um, and I'll do this one also to the Aaron project right so just to prove to you that you can do I can tag items or categories in QBO plus and advanced whether you make a billable or not to a project this is why I can have a P&L by project two sided items I'm gonna click save and close we'll get to advance in a sec do appreciate your patience but we're right on time we'll be fine send about 10 minutes in advance and you guys let me know what else you want to see in an hour you know, I can do different series too uh oh just forgot where I was gonna go I know someone there can probably remind me oh products and services list items list this is what I mean by two-sided items I'm going to filter by contractor work category so you guys can see there let's do flooring for example two-sided items you are going to use them with job costing just like you do in desktop you name it whatever see don't worry about price rules there's price levels too but notice I have a sales price an income and cost going to cost of goods sold very important because it allows me to actually and you can use non inventory parts too but typically I do service items for this turn on the purchase side that way you can well, on an estimate and an invoice is the revenue side of this item but on an expense as I showed you in the items detail section it's the product and service it's the cost side so I'm tracking both essentials cannot do that for material and expense only for time so again you need plus for any of this to happen and I would say just in a real way to be most viable you have to start here you have to have at least plus for this to happen but these two side and item things are important because the invoice is item based and that's where you're getting the revenue from and because I'm in plus I can add an item field just like I have on a bill check credit card charge and desktop right you have those expenses items tabs I can do that too in plus some people do not know you can do that all right good so job costing now the reason why I did that I tagged some stuff and made it billable is because some of you are here for just the pass through so a couple three minutes on pass through and automating that to an invoice pass through TME time to expense to an invoice there is one form I wanted to mention that many will use if you're invoicing your clients are invoicing customers for work that they want to tag to them but they don't bill till the end of the month which you can automate in QBO land you can automate pass through time material expense to an invoice in two different ways in desktop you cannot you have to choose what time and cost goes on an invoice from what's tagged to the customer or job or whatever right 
So the theme is the same. We're doing stuff. The windows are different. But the automation in QBO is the advantage. Delayed charge, though, is an important form. It's, a, it's not an estimate. I use estimates for, like, bids, contracts, stuff like that. And can, I can progress invoice. And that's great. But the delayed charge form, though I can't progress invoice against it, you're just invoicing against it, it just allows me to tag Aaron in that project and go, oh, yeah, right, I forgot to do this uh, flooring thing. I keep using the same examples. 500 bucks, not taxable. This is non-posting, but it holds the charge, right? And some people do this for, like, landscaping, pool cleaning. It's a great thing, although personally I prefer a, recurring sales receipt with QuickBooks payments and you're just drafting your your customers out right monthly right it sends them a receipt you know you don't want IR but invoices and accounts receivable is still quite in play in the US today right as much as I want people just to go to sales receipts and get away from accounts receivable because then it's a collection piece and QBO solves that too really well with payments and a sales receipt make it recurring you guys some of you are probably doing that with your your books file just direct debiting your client's accounts monthly for the services you provide. They get a receipt. It's an awesome way to do it. And I wish I had a payments account I could show you. But I do have slides in that deck that I uploaded, so you're not totally at a loss. But some of you are doing that already. But we're talking invoicing because it's still very much important in the business culture, invoicing against time material expense. Now, if you go to sales and all sales or customers, you have a money bar and you see my unbilled activity against, you know, the customer model and stuff. Delayed charges, time, expense, any credits. I can create an invoice from here. When you go create an invoice, let's do like the kind of manual away here, and I choose Aaron, <laughs> customer model, the panel will kick out on the right. See that over here on the right? You know? It shows the billable expense and a delayed charge. So I can just filter too by, let's say it's charges and I want to add this. Now this is posting. This is going to credit revenue and debit AR. Right. And let's look at expenses. Let's add. Okay. I've just taken those delayed charge, expense, any time, whatever, and now made an invoice out of it. Right? And you can see what's linked. It's awesome. You know, this is just for clients that just want to just do pass through. QBO Plus, it's the way to go. Now you can automate this, and then we'll talk about advanced. Got eight minutes, don't worry, we're right on. Um, accountant settings. Go to advanced. There is a global setting in the automation section. It's been here forever. You know, I grew up on desktop. I started supporting the 2002 product, right? My favorite, one of my favorite desktop products is still 2005. <laughs> Um, and I started using QBO in 09. This feature has been in QBO since then at least. So look, I can automatically invoice unbilled activity. This is essentials and up. But again, we're using plus because, I mean, come on, I've already beaten that one, right? We know why we're using plus. Automatically create invoice notify me or remind me to or just don't notify me. Weekly or, you know, weekly, every Tuesday, invoices are going to be created against any unbilled activity. In other words, anywhere. I've checked off the billable box on a time, weekly or single time sheet, a check, a bill, after tagging the customer or project or sub-customer, doesn't matter. I check billable, QBO is going to create invoices. Now, they're not going to send them. They're going to create them automatically, and you'll see it in the audit log. It'll be by, the user will be system administrator. Okay, there's that. Now, that might be too global of a setting for you. So how do I make it specific to a customer? So 50 of my 75 clients are going to want to do this, where I just send them an invoice every week or month for all the unbilled activity against them, right? You set up a recurring transaction. Also, another advantage of QBO over desktop. Look at Rafal Belinsky, his invoice. He's a real person, by the way. One of the smartest people I ever met. See the options? So every month... It's going to send Rafal based on the end. Oh, this is every week? Wow, yeah. He's probably one of my better clients then. $2,000 for equipment rental. We just agree on that. And he knows that anything else I do for him or someone in the office does for him, administratively, whatever, uh, service-wise, I want to make sure it's added to this invoice. 
So this invoice is sent out every Tuesday to Rafal, and he pays it by Friday. Include unbilled charges. So he'll get $2,000 plus whatever unbilled activity there is, a tag to his name. So that's automating that. Literally creating the invoice and sending it specifically for a customer. So if the global setting is too global, then you know you want to pick and choose more, but you do have some clients you want to invoice just whatever because that's the agreement you have, well then this is it. I wish sales receipts had this include on build charges setting, but they don't yet. Because again, my thing is it's 2020, we want to get away from invoicing. And we want to get, like with this QuickBooks payments, auto draft from account sales receipt thing, right? <clears throat> That's where I want to be. It's just more efficient getting paid than having to wait, whatever your net terms are. But invoicing is still in play. And the larger the, the client, I'm sure you've seen, is it is there's more doing a lot where they are, right, in invoicing, sure. You know. So anyways, I wanted to show you that. That's how you make that specific to a, co a customer or client pick up on build activity. There's also some good reports, you know, like on build charges or on build time. It's a great report to look at. Okay. There's that too. And of course in the customer record as well. So it might not just be project tracking or job costing. It might just be passed through. Still I want plus.